It is indeed a great privilege and blessings for me to be able to host the Honorable Vice President of India and the Chairman of Rajya Sabha, Sri Jagdeep Dhankarji. I am also honored with the presence of the Honorable Governor of Mizoram, Dr. Hari Babu Khambam Patiji, the Honorable Chief Minister of Mizoram, Pu Laldoma, and Honorable Members of this House. Sir, I, on behalf of this House, welcomes you wholeheartedly. Our Honorable Chief Guest, the Vice President of India, is a visionary leader who has rendered tireless contributions to the nation and made substantial contributions to the country in what it is today. We cherish this visit it will go down in our memories as an auspicious moment in the times to come. May I now call upon the leader of the house, Pool Aldo Oma, to deliver a speech. The Honorable Vice President of India, Sri Zadib Nankarzi, the Honorable Governor of Mizoram, Dr. Hari Babu Khambam Patiji, the Honorable Speaker of the House, Pul Albi Akzama, and Honorable Members of this House. As we gather here today in this August House, it is with profound gratitude that we extend a deep appreciation to the Vice President of India, Sri Zagdeep Dankarzi for taking the time out of his demanding schedule
to grace us with his presence here today and address the nine Mizoram Legislative Assembly on his maiden visit to the state as Vice President of India. It brings me great joy to reflect upon the recent celebration of our 38th State Day across Mizoram and I am delighted to share my colleagues here today that the Honorable Vice President has extended greetings to the people of Mizoram through social media, expressing his sincere wishes for the progress, prosperity, and well-being of the people of the state. It is indeed a privilege to have him with us in person today. We anticipate with hopeful hearts that this visit is the first of many more to come in the future. We only wish he would, he would have stayed longer to release our captivating weather, breathtaking landscape, and the warmth of the people here. When Mizoram attained its status of Indian territory in 1972, India had already charged ahead with its fifth five-year plan, placing us 25 years behind in terms of development. Moreover, for two decades until 1986, our state experienced troubled times, slowing our progress a great deal. Despite facing numerous obstacles, we take immense pride in our efforts to catch up and align ourselves with the nation's trajectory and in the remarkable achievements that have come to characterize our state and its people. Foremost among these accomplishments is the transformation of a once strive-ridden state into the most peaceful state in our country. Additionally, our impressive literacy rate, ranking third highest nationwide, stands as a testament to our unwavering dedication to education and progress. However, as equated in the timeless words of Robert Frost, quote, I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep, unquote. We acknowledge the arduous path that lies ahead, driving us with renewed determination within the chambers of this August House. Recognizing the enormity of tasks and the constraints of time, we are acutely aware that the journey of governance is far from easy, contrary to popular belief. Our new government is humbled by the overwhelming mandate it has received from the people of Mizoram. And as it embarks on its journey to serve them, it will be our collective endeavor to be true to this mandate and the aspirations of the people. To realize our vision of a transformed Mizoram, characterized by inclusive and equitable growth, we rely heavily on the continued guidance and support from the central government. Additionally, we require adept advocates who can effectively champion our cause before authorities in New Delhi. I therefore seize this opportunity to humbly request the Honorable Vice President of India to assume the role of an ambassador for Mizoram upon his return to New Delhi, as well as his travels across India and beyond. Such advocacy on the part of a dignitary as important as the Vice President will undoubtedly bolster our efforts and pave the way for our collective aspirations to come to fruition. I'm confident that today's visit by the Honorable Vice President will not only inspire my fellow legislators in this house, 
but also strengthened their dedication as representatives of the people of Mizoram at large. Reflecting on the trajectory of Sri Zakdeep Nankarji's life journey, from his modest beginning as a young lawyer in Rajasthan, and then a member of parliament, and then union minister, and governor of West Bengal, and now to his current esteemed position as vice president of our nation, one realizes what a truly remarkable individual he is. We are blessed to have him in our presence, and I'm sure that I speak for everyone present here today in wishing him a very successful tenure as vice president. In conclusion, I extend my sincere wishes for the Honorable Vice President's safe journey back to Delhi. We hope that he has found us much enjoyment and significance in this visit as we have, marking a truly momentous occasion for the state of Mizoram. Zai Hin. Thank you, Mr. Chief Minister. May I now invite the Honorable Vice President of India, Sri Jagdeep Ji, to address the House. Wait, sir. They are orange, sir. My greetings to all of you. I am indeed overwhelmed. What I see in the house that is nearly in full strength is a message I will take from this place to all the legislatures and parliament. Honorable Governor Mizoram, Dr. Hari Babu Kamb Mapati, Honorable Speaker Mizoram Legislative Assembly, Lal Biak Jama, Honorable Chief Minister and Leader of House Mizoram Legislative Assembly, Laldu Oma, Leader of the Opposition Mizoram Legislative Assembly, Lal Chandama. Ralte. Honorable members of Mizoram Legislative Assembly, officials, staff of secretariat, distinguished audience in the gallery, friends in the media. My greetings to you all. It is a privilege, an honor, and a moment to ever cherish to address this August Assembly. It is a matter of pride that this Assembly has, for the first time, three women members. Congratulations to them. Their presence in this House reflects increasing participation of women in governance and policy making. We are fast heading towards women-led development. The spectacular performance of our girls on the 75th Republic Day at Kartave Path was a defining moment and a welcome change. It was their day. On September 20 and 21 last year, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha passed a constitutional legislation, Nari Sakti Vandana Dinya, providing for one-third reservation for women in Lok Sabha and state legislatures. This became law and a constitutional prescription with the signing by the Honorable President of India, 
Srimati Dropti Murmu, the first tribal and the first woman tribal to occupy the highest constitutional office in the largest democracy on the planet, home to one-sixth of humanity. What a glorious moment, an epochal event, a tribal woman president embedding this historic change, this game-changer provision in our constitution. This involvement of women in Lok Sabha and legislatures will be transformational in evolution of policies and governance. So, be prepared. In the state assembly elections to come, witness amazing, soothing spectacle in this house of 40, where 13 or more members will be women participating in policy making and governance. It is a matter of joy for us all that our nation is on a path of unprecedented progress. Our economy a decade ago was at number 11 in the world. Now we are the fifth largest global economy ahead of Canada, UK and France. As a nation, we are already the third largest in terms of purchasing power. In coming two, three years, by all indications, we will be the third largest global economy ahead of Japan and Germany. The country now has world-class infrastructure of roads and connectivity. In all this development, Northeast, including the state of Mizoram, has been a significant partner. The region has seen unprecedented exponential growth in the last decade. The government's policy of look east, act east has been a game changer. Last decade has been the golden era of the Northeast. The Northeast Council played a crucial role with achievements of, a, of over 12,000 kilometers of road, 700 megawatt power plants, and many national institutions coming up. Friends, the entire world applauded India's presidency of G20, giving us high global image and a cutting edge to our soft diplomatic power. G20 meetings were held all over the country, in all the states and union territories, including Mizoram. Thereby, this state has gained significant footing in tourism. The International Travel Mart 2022 that concluded in the capital witnessed laying the foundation stone of Aizawa Convention Center at Chite, a Prashad project in Mizoram and two Bamboo Link Roads. The Aizal Bypass Road and Bamboo Link Roads are being developed at a total cost of over 600 crores Indian rupees under the PM Divine Scheme, out of which two bamboo link roads are being constructed at the estimated cost of 66 crores and 33 crores, respectively. With the development of Isle Tourism Convention Center and two bamboo link roads, there will be a port surge in tourism in the state. I look forward. Honorable Leader of the House, to avail an opportunity to be at the center that opens many vistas for the state of Mizoram, particularly in tourism and conferences. This convention center will be critical in making significant economic contribution to the state as well. Mizoram is gifted with incredible beauty and cultural richness. I have witnessed it right from the day, morning, I landed with my wife. I inquired from the Honorable Governor, which is the hill station of Mizoram. The Honorable Governor said the entire state is hill station. We will not find such forest coverage elsewhere in the country. 
surrounded by lush green hills and villages had the occasion to see the soothing spectacle these development activities will enhance tourism in the area and there is potential for the same to be exploited i commend members of this august assembly for reflecting discipline and decorum worth emulating by others i look back at the constituent assembly debates for over 3 for about 3 years the constituent assembly debated discussed deliberated constituent assembly grappled with issues that were contentious highly divisive highly emotive there never was an occasion for them either to engage in disturbance or disruption or come to the well i find in this house what i have seen and heard about it quite close to the performance of the constituent assembly members of which assembly gave us the great constitution i will take this message in all earnestness because i am motivated inspired that if such an ecosystem is there in temple of democracy the nation benefits the state benefits and the people prosper friends we all in nation are part of marathon march for vikshit bharat at 2047 this august assembly needs to roll out a road map of growth and development that is futuristic and contributes to the success of this glorious marathon for vikshit bharat at 2047 when we'll have the occasion to celebrate centenary of our independence friends your enormous potential in tourism horticulture local art and products need to be fully exploited it makes available to young minds great opportunities the remarkable focus on the northeast india with a separate department at the central government has resulted in great outcome the exponential rise in physical and digital connectivity roads has been a game changer we all in the country have to keep our nationalism uppermost we have to take pride in being citizens of this great nation we have to be proud of our exponential phenomenal rise in all sectors that is being uploaded by global institutions it is time for us to be guided by what dr ambedkar has reflected i quote you should be indian first indian last and nothing else but indian and quote honorable members i take the opportunity to invite all the honorable members to be my to be my guest and visit new building of parliament bharat mandapam where we had the great occasion to have g20 final meeting yashobhumi the venue of p20 as my guest it will be an honor to me and to members in the parliament that they will be able to interact and give a different kind of thought process how a house can be handled so decorously and in a dignified manner giving highest productivity honorable members we have to look at the contemporaneous scenario contemporary scenario for india at the moment is a bit in every walk of life if we talk in terms of economic development the world is taking us to be hot spot of opportunity and investment we are being ranked very high by global institutions like international monetary fund and the world bank when we think in terms of infrastructure what was not obtaining earlier something which was beyond dream and contemplation 
is a ground reality. I had the occasion to be member of Lok Sabha in 1989, and the leader of the House had the occasion to be there in 1984. We know the situation then, and most of you gather about it. We were in a very difficult situation, economically and otherwise. Imagine the plight of the nation that once was known as a golden bird, Sonia Kichiria. The gold had to be airlifted, placed to two banks in Switzerland to sustain our fiscal credibility. And now that is something which we can't recollect. We are marching ahead of other nations, developed nations. Those who sought to give advice to us are seeking our advice. They are coming to this country with hope and optimism to make opportunities available to them. In this kind of upbeat scenario, it lies in the domain of legislature to play the decisive role of enlightening the executive and ensuring that we are on a passage that is fastest so that we become a global power. Never before our youth had an ecosystem available to them that they could, by virtue of governance policies and initiatives, exploit their talent, realize their ambitions and dreams. This state is full of hope and possibility. This state has to work through the wisdom of legislature to unleash the opportunities, be it in hydropower, be it in tourism, be it in startups. These are the times where a constant of place is no longer a constraint. With digital penetration taking place in a country that has stunned world institutions, our digital penetration was remarked by the World Bank that India achieved in six years, which could not be achieved by others in four decades and more. If we take it, our transactions in this forum, in 2022, they were four times the transactions of USA, UK, France, and Germany taken together. Look at the genius of our people, their adaptability to technology that per capita internet usage in our country is more than that of China and USA taken together. The entire country could weather the storm of pandemic COVID because we had a mechanism of having inclusive growth. It is difficult for the world to recognize and they admitted only after results that in this country, there could be 500 million bank accounts that reflects adequately of banking inclusion of the ordinary person, the person in the last row to take benefit of governance. The nation stands for all. The kind of development, I can assure you friends, is taking place not in a periodical manner, Everyone is benefiting thereby. And this part of the country in particular is gifted by nature with beauty, elegance, forest, ecology. There can hardly be a rival place where there are opportunities for tourism. I call upon members of the assembly in tandem and togetherness evolve a mechanism so that youth of your state are able to take full advantage of the opportunities that lie ahead of them, including in areas of which you all are aware, disruptive technologies. We have to live with them. We have to use them. We have to face the challenges they offer us. And that can be done only when in one voice, this August house, gifted house, 
well representative house shows the way to the youth and other people that yes time for you to unlock the lock and reward the nation and state with progress that is ours i thank each one of you for sparing time i know having been a junior parliamentary affairs minister in 1990 and chairman rajya sabha the presence in this number it could not be more i am greatly touched by your presence i carry these memories in my heart all my life best of luck to all of you best wishes and i look forward to receiving you as chairman rajya sabha as and when you make it convenient in groups or individuals thank you so much for the time and opportunity made available thank you thank you sir for the inspiring words i am sure the honorable members would like to make your invitations a reality especially to the new parliament building and other places of importance may we <coughs> i'm requesting all the members to assemble at the golden jubilee monument hall for a photo session with the vice president of india we will resume sitting on the 27th of february at 10:30 am to continue the ongoing session the proceeding of this session with the vice president of india is now concluded the session is adjourned may we all rise up for the national anthem <laughs>